There was a king in old Ireland, one actually of five kings at the time, a king for each of the regions of Ireland. Now, he was a beloved king. His name was Norlock, and, and everybody in the kingdom really loved him. But there was something about the king that was very, very strange. Every year, he would command a barber from the kingdom to come in and cut his hair, only once a year. And at any other time, the king would always be seen only wearing a big gray hoodie. In fact, even in the castle, he always covered his head. So you could see his benevolent eyes, you could see his ruddy nose, you could see and hear him talk through his lips, and you could see his beard as well. But you could never see the top of his head. Now the strange thing about this was, whenever the king had his hair cut by a barber, the barber who did that job disappeared and was never seen from again. Well, this went on for about seven years until the surrounding villages were getting desperate for barbers because they kept disappearing. In fact, it was so bad that when the annual haircut was due, all the barbers in the kingdom hid from the king's soldiers. Well, the king absolutely would not stand for that. And even though he was a beloved king, and very, very seldom would issue any kind of edict, he did in this case. And he sent out a command, and it was posted in every village in the kingdom, ordering every barber in the kingdom to appear in the castle on a date certain. Well, what were they going to do? Everyone in town knew who the barbers were, and some would probably tell the soldiers if they hid. So they marched as a group, about seven or eight, towards the castle and were ushered up into the king's chamber. Now, among those seven was an apprentice barber named Thomas. Thomas was about hmm, 11 or 12 years old, never did keep count, or at least his family didn't. And, and he had been learning barbering for several months. He had his own little scissors. He had his own little comb. His father had given him a nice leather bag that he could put those things in. He was called to the king's chamber with all of the other barbers. Well, as they arrived and kind of moved around looking at one another, very, very afraid of what would happen, one of the king's men came in and he had in his fist long, straws. And he said to the barbers, there are seven straws in my hand and there are seven of you here. Six of these straws are long. One of these straws is short. The barber who pulls the short straw is commanded to be here to cut the king's hair. Well, they all looked at each other and one to the other said, oh, I hope I get the long straw because I don't want to be banished from the kingdom forever. And so very carefully, the first barber pulled out a straw and it was long and he laughed. And the second barber reached out and he pulled a straw and he laughed. It got down to the last straw because Thomas was the youngest 
and nobody had drawn the short straw. And they all looked at Thomas so sadly, and Thomas was weeping as he reached out, and he knew what he was going to find, and he pulled out a short straw. And the king's man said, Thomas, you have been selected to cut the king's hair. It is a great privilege, and I expect you here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Thomas walked out of the room and the other barbers put their arms around him and said, oh, you poor boy. And Thomas finally got home and his mother opened the door. Thomas, what happened? Oh, mother, I got the short straw. I have to cut the king's hair. Absolutely not. You're a young boy. I don't want to lose you forever. She immediately reached over pulled her shawl and wrapped it around her big shoulders and she put on her special walking shoes and she said, I'll be right back. And she marched as only her mother, his mother could do, down the road to the village, into the castle, hammered on the castle door. A soldier opened up the door. Yes, I must see the king. I'm sorry, the king. No, I must... See the king right now. It is, um, it is, if I don't see the king, I'll stand here all night. Well, what was the, what was the guard to do? Plus, the king was a good man. And so very quickly, the king passed downward that, yes, he would see the mother. Well, she came in and she said, Thomas is my son. He's only 12 years old. He has been picked to cut your hair. But every barber who has done that has disappeared. I will not have that for my son. He has a whole life ahead of him. Well, the king looked at her and said, Madam, I promise that nothing will happen to Thomas. I said, unless he does a very bad job with my hair. Well, Mother said, oh, thank you, Your Excellency. And she went home and said to Thomas, Thomas, the king promises me that nothing will happen, but you'd better do a good job with your hair. Well, Thomas said, oh, well, all right. And so the next morning he gathered his scissors and he gathered his comb and he made sure there was no lint in the comb, not for the king, sharpened scissors, put them in his bag, and he very carefully walked into the village and up to the castle, where the guard saw him coming. He said, come right in. Thomas, what a great honor you have. Oh, yeah. Thomas was brought upstairs and immediately into the king's chamber. The king was already in the chamber, sitting on a chair, you know, a fairly high chair, and, and he had his hoodie on, and so they shut the door, and, and as, as Thomas pulled out his scissors and his comb, the king moved off his hoodie. He removed it from his head, and Thomas looked at it, and he was shocked. His eyes were as big as saucers because the king had the ears of a horse. The, 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 king's, the king's ears were all brown and furry and they almost touched his shoulders. The king says, never mind, get on with the haircut, Thomas, and you better not nick one of my ears. Well, Thomas grabbed his scissors and he began working very, very carefully and he, his sweat was pouring off of his forehead even though he was only 12. He kept trimming and at one point in time he lifted up one of the king's ears and clipped underneath it and then put it back down again. Well, before long, he, he, it looked pretty good. And the king pulled up a mirror and looked and said, ah, you, you, you did a good, you have earned your money. And he gave Thomas a gold coin. Thomas was about to leave and the king said, I am going to allow you to live. But if you tell 
the story of my ears, you will disappear from the kingdom forever. Thomas said, uh, what, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to make it perfectly clear. You may not tell this story to anyone who has ears or a tongue. Thomas said, ears or a tongue? Yes, Your Excellency. And he left the castle and he was just beside himself. Ears or a tongue? Ears or a tongue? And, it, and the, the secret of the king's ears was just inside him. It was like a boil. It was just terrible. He got home and his mother grabbed him and said, are you okay? He said, oh yeah, but I'm kind of sick. I think I'll go to bed. And he did. And, and his tummy got worse and worse. And finally, the next morning, he was laying around and, um, oh, he was like having a very serious case of the ague, not feeling well at all. And his mother said, what is the matter? He said, I just... He says, I have this secret and it's inside me and I don't know what to do. Well, finally, his mother called for the local doctor. The doctor came to the house and he asked his mother to leave. And then Thomas said to the doctor, doctor, I have this horrible thing in my tummy, the secret that I can't tell to anyone who has ears or a tongue. So I can't tell you because you have both. And the doctor said, ears or a tongue? Yes, and because it's inside of me, it's, it's like a sickness, and I don't think I'll ever get well. Well, the doctor said, hmm, hmm, ears or a tongue? Hmm. He said, I have an idea. Thomas, I want you to go out into the woods, and I want you to find a tree. And I want you to put your arms around the tree and then you lean into the tree and you tell the secret to the tree because the tree has neither ears or a tongue. Thomas said, what a good idea. And he jumped off of the bed and he ran out of the house as fast as he could. And he, he came to a fork in the road in the forest and there was a tree that was just perfect. It looked like a beautiful young tree. So he ran over to it and he put his arms around the tree. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. Nobody was around. He pushed his lips into the trunk of the tree and said, The king has the ears of a horse. The king has the ears of a horse. And he backed away. The secret was all out of his body. Oh, he felt wonderful. And he went home and his mother saw that color was back in his cheeks and he was well. Well, nothing was heard then for months and months and months. But every year, King Norok had a huge celebration. And he invited the other four kings from Ireland to join him in celebration. And he always had a contest. And the contest this year was for musicians. Which king's musician could play the best? Well, the king's musician, King Norlox, was known far and wide for his beautiful harp music. And his name was Justine. And Justine knew that he would be competing for a bag of gold. And so he worked weeks before the event practicing with his harp. And he practiced so hard that unfortunately, not a week before the event, a crack appeared in the frame of his harp. And it was useless. Justine said, I've got to find another harp. I've got to build something. And so he got his saw and he got his ax and he went into the woods and he moved right to where there was a break between the roads and there was a beautiful tree. So he said, that will do fine. 
and he cut that tree down and he carved out the frame of a new harp. And, and he only had days after finishing it to practice, but whenever he touched the strings of the harp, oh, he got beautiful music, better than ever before. He was a little leery of that, but he was also excited. And the competition occurred that day. The gala was there. All the kings were in the, in the actually in the main hall of the castle. And there were knights and there were barons and earls and people from all five of the kingdoms. And all of the harpists were ready to compete. And Justine was the first. And Justine sat down with his harp, barely touched the strings, and out came the saddest, most beautiful song. And everybody, everybody there cried. And then he played a lovely, lovely and very funny song. And he tweaked from side to side and everybody laughed. And, and then he played a rousing march with the harp and everybody cheered. Well, even though the other harpists played well too, there was no question that Justine's music was by far the best. And the king said, Justine, you have won the bag of gold. And now you must play another song for me. And Justine said, your majesty, I am afraid of my harp. I don't understand the music that is coming out is not as much from my fingers, but from the harp itself. There's a magic in here, and I don't know that I can control it any longer. And the king laughed and said, of course you can. I am the king, and I command you to play another song. Well, Justine sat to the harp and was about to touch the strings when the harp, vibrated and out of it came this eerie sound. The king has the ears of a horse. Well, there was a shock. Did, did, did you hear what that, did you hear what that was? Nobody thought that was true, but the harp then vibrated again and said louder, the king has the ears of a horse. Well, King Norlock was so shocked that he fell backward from his throne and his hoodie fell off and those long brown furry ears flapped out over his shoulders. There was a gasp in the room. The king had fainted. And when he woke up, everyone was gone. He stood up and he said, now everyone knows my secret. I know I'm no, I no longer have to hide anymore, but they loved me as a king. And they did, and they welcomed, they welcomed King Norlock forever. And they loved his long brown furry ears. And that's the story of the king with the ears of a horse. <laughs>